All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this um, Tuesday morning. It's Valentine's Day, right? Oh, my gosh. So, new chocolate here. Thank you, whoever brought the chocolate. Sharon? Sharon brought the chocolate? Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Sharon. Sharon. Oh, there you are. There's your voice there. Um, got to exercise, Robin. I know. It says I know. here, the one-minute workout. Is that right? One minute? Yeah, he's, he makes really good points. Dr. Martin Gabala is on the phone. He's a professor and chair of the kinesiology, if I say that right, department at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. He uh, is a contributor to NBC Nightly News, The Conan Show. He's been on Conan. Yeah, I think that's cool. Uh, the Wall Street Journal to the Today Show, The New York Times, and he has received many wa- awards for teaching. Um, and he's going to teach us right now how to uh, burn off the chocolate, which is a <laughs> the one-minute workout. Good morning, Dr. Gamali. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thanks for having me on. Are you in Ontario right now? I'm in Hamilton, which is about 45 minutes outside of Toronto. Uh, okay, okay. Everybody's, everybody's bragging about Hamilton. The plane. <laughs> Great city. Yeah. So, so with the one minute workout. Well, what does that mean? Does that? I mean, one minute. That doesn't seem like it could be enough. Yeah, it's a teaser headline. It's based on research that we've done uh, where we've had people do three 20-second bursts of exercise. That's set within a little bit of recovery. So start to finish, our shortest protocol is 10 minutes. Uh, But within that, it's only one minute of very vigorous exercise. And it's really based on a line of research that we've been conducting on interval exercise training and looking at how time-efficient workouts can provide a lot of the benefits that we associate with a more traditional approach. And and do you have... Uh, okay, I know it's a short interview here, but can you? Okay, maybe you can tell us some results. What, have you worked with somebody that has used this technique and and made a difference in their? What is it? What is it? In, it doesn't help you lose weight, or does it? Uh, so intervals can clearly be a, a time efficient way to burn calories as well, but obviously it's much easier to control the energy inside. So <laughs> not having as many of those Valentine's chocolates are, are going to help there. Yeah. Uh, really, the book is about. Uh, exercise for fitness. You know, a lot of people think you exercise to lose weight and that's what confers the health benefits. You know, if there's a key message, it's no, there's that direct line between exercise, cardiovascular fitness, regardless of the number on the scale. And so the book is really about time-effective approaches to try and achieve that. And the heart is so super important because if a person is overweight but not in shape, the heart is still going to work really really hard so you might as well have it work hard while you're doing the right things and the wrong things absolutely you know and there's good research to show that people who are overweight and obese if their fitness is the same as a normal weight person their relative risk profile looks pretty good so the risk of dying from all causes is actually quite similar so it really speaks to this need that we have to worry about the fitness side of things not just the diet side and regardless again of that number on the scale or body size body composition cardiovascular fitness is really really important you know there's been a recent call that it should be a vital sign something that we measure just like body Body weight or blood sugar uh, or blood pressure. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. no, I was just going to say we have a copy of the book here, and I was I was looking through it, and uh, it's interesting that some of the exercises you talk about are actually ones we already know. I, I guess I wanted to say that I don't. We don't have to learn a whole lot of new stuff. In other words. No, so, you know, what we've learned about interval exercise training is, number one, it's not only for elite athletes. People think that it's only this all-out, as-hard-as-you-can-go type exercise. Clearly, that's a very effective approach, but it's not for everyone. There's many different flavors of interval training, and so the workouts that we provide in the book, they're just some examples, but they're all based on scientific studies, and it's really an approach. There's no single best interval exercise. You don't only have to do it on a bike. There's lots of different ways you can do this. You don't have to go to a gym. There's ways to do body body weight style intervals. So you're right. In some respects, everything old is new again. But I think what we've learned is just how little exercise you can do and still reap benefits. Obviously, the more the better. People should be following the public health guidelines. But the main reason that they tell us why they're not is lack of time. So let's Ah. give them some other choices that are based on good science. Uh, How did you uh, gather the scientific data that was needed for this? Did you have different people doing different things? Yeah. We've published probably close to 100 studies now and others around the world. So I've been studying this for 15 years. But to give a very specific example that gleans from the one-minute workout. So we've had people do that 
10-minute time commitment, which involves one minute of very vigorous exercise within a 10-minute time commitment. And we've compared that to people who are doing 50, 5 zero minutes of continuous traditional exercise. And over several months of training, what we find is the improvement in their fitness, the improvement in their blood sugar control, many other health-related markers is very similar, even though the interval exercisers have a five-fold lower time commitment. So it speaks to this idea of time efficiency. We like to say that intervals provide a better way or a better strategy to fit exercise and activity within your day rather than having to structure your day and your life around okay. exercise. Now, years ago, there was a, a, a school of thought, and I don't, know if, I don't know if we still subscribe to this school of thought, but it said that you have to raise your heart rate and keep it at that level for an extended period of time. I'm thinking 10 minutes was less than what they had told us way, way back when, when we probably did an interview maybe 10 years ago already, but uh, is, is there still truth that keep the heart rate going for a while? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and again, I want to stress here, the public health guidelines are based on great science, and generally they're recommending 150 minutes of exercise per week in minimum doses of 10 minutes or so. Again, that's very good evidence or very good uh, recommendations, but people are telling us they would like some other options because if people tend to don't have that one hour in their day or 45 minutes, they tend to blow off exercise. And really a message is these short and more vigorous workouts can be very effective. And so, for example, in that one-minute workout that I was talking about, average heart rate is around 80% or 85% over the 10 minutes because heart rate stays up in recovery because the preceding exercise is quite vigorous. And uh, your book is also an inspiration to physical therapists because they have to see people who are immobile and try to help them uh, ob obtain that mobility again and this is perfect for them. Well, there's many different approaches and strategies. So if there are joint mobility issues, for example, you know, swimming, uh, rowing, there's different type, almost any type of traditional cardio exercise that we think of can be applied in an interval manner. So it can be varied up and altered to suit starting fitness levels and various levels of ability. If we, do, if we do start out with this and we go for 10 minutes, what do you recommend? Should we do it first thing in the morning? Should we do it at lunchtime? And I'm, I'm guessing some people do this and then they do it more than once a day, right? Yeah, so a couple thoughts on that. One is do exercise when you like it. You know, I can sit here till I'm blue in the face and say, you know, if you exercise in the morning after an overnight fast and you don't eat breakfast, you might burn a few more calories from fat. But if that doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't really matter. So number one approach yeah. is do the exercise, fit it into your life that works for you. But this idea of exercise snacking, there's something to that. So more frequent, shorter bouts of activity through the day, which are a lot easier to work into our life, there's evidence to show it's more beneficial than a single period of exercise uh, for an extended duration. Well, you are referred to as the worldwide guru of the science of uh, uh, time, uh, time uh, uh, efficiency workouts. Did you used to not like to work out in the beginning and then you needed to learn how to do that for your own health? No, and certainly there's lots of other experts doing some good stuff on this. I was, uh, when I, I, I've always exercised, but ironically, early in my career, I was a young, busy professor. I have a working wife, two young kids. Ironically, for an exercise physiologist, I find myself having very little time to work out. And I was teaching a course at the time, I still teach it to this day, that looks at the physiology of human performance. And my students are always interested in the training regimes of elite athletes. And one of the characteristics of their training was intervals. And so I thought, wait a minute here you're teaching this stuff maybe you yeah. know you might want to try this on your own and so it's you know it's one of those it's I train a lot using intervals I still like to go for a walk in the woods with my dog but for training much of it is interval based and it's really been the focus of our research for the last um, well well over a decade now well so a good wow. strategy if you want to uh, try to get a little bit more fit and uh, get exercise um, factored into your lifestyle your day uh, call me if you want the book that was sent to us it's called the one minute workout it's written by dr. Martin Gabala on the phone right now and uh, you can have the copy that was sent to us the rest of us will have to go buy it do you have a, a website you can recommend uh, yeah you can get it from booksellers everywhere it's published by Avery which is an imprint of Penguin or you can follow me on Twitter at Gabala M okay uh, Dr. Martin Gabala thank you so much for being on the air with us have a great uh, what is today Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day I always <laughs> want to say Thanksgiving thank, thank you doctor you too I appreciate the opportunity to be on alright we will be right back back
weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Tuesday, times of clouds and sunshine with nothing more than a shower in spots. High 78 to 82. Partly to mostly cloudy Tuesday night, low 57 to 61. For Wednesday, variable cloudiness and becoming windy with a shower or heavy thunderstorm around in the afternoon. The high 78 to 82. Thursday will be partly sunny and not as warm but pleasant with low humidity, high 68 to 72. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Next Generation MD is the future of healthcare now. Listen in the first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. to learn how the future in PRP treatments are here in our area. Find out the many ways that Dr. Juan Jordan, MD, Charles Brooks, NP, and case manager Mark Shaw have brought the family medicine practice to a new level. Hear from the very people that benefit from the fine work they have done in this field. Next Generation MD, every first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. here on WOCA 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m., The Source. If your home needs some work and you're ready to get the job done, then join on top of the world communities as they host the Home Improvement Expo this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Windows, flooring, solar power, remodeling, home entertainment. Plus, there will be great door prizes and giveaways. Experts from every field of the home improvement industry will be on hand to display their services and answer questions about the latest trends in home improvement. It's this Saturday at the Circle Square Cultural Center in Ocala. This free event is sponsored by On Top of the World Communities. You're going to love your new windows and the immediate energy savings when you work with Renewal by Anderson. You'll experience legendary quality and installation. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com for a free in-home consultation with the pros. Right now, save 20% on windows, doors, and installation. No money down, 0% interest, and 0 payments for 12 months with approved credit. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com. RenewalByAnderson.com. Offer ends February 28th. License CGC 1524135. Come to the 4th Annual Habitat Strawberry Festival on March 4th, 2017 at the McPherson Government Complex. The festival's goal is not only to have vendors, food, a car show, a kid's zone, live entertainment featuring one flight up, a lip sync competition, police versus fire department pie eating contest, and all things strawberry, but to also raise funds to build a habitat home for a family in our community. Check out the website, habitatocala.org, and follow the link. The Habitat for Humanity Strawberry Festival is March 4th with breakfast served at 7.30. Free parking, free admission. Coming this and every second Friday of the month at 11 a.m. is Trinity Healthcare Medical Center with your host, Dr. David Kuhn. Trinity Healthcare Medical Center is Ocala's only progressive primary care clinic. Be sure to listen in and also check their website at thcmc.com. Then call them with your questions at 512-0000. That's 512-0000. That's every second Friday at 11 a.m. for Trinity Healthcare Medical Center here on The Source WOCA. Here is a 30-second news brief from the source WOCA. Female workers at Coleman Federal Correctional Complex who say they were sexually harassed by prisoners have reached a settlement that could amount to $20 million. The man accused of killing five people at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport lied about his criminal record on his application to be a security guard in Alaska. And tomorrow's Powerball jackpot is now at $310 million. And that is your 30-second news brief from the source WOCA. You deserve a little getaway, so WOCA and Red Roof Inn are going to give you one. Throughout the month of February, tune in to AM Ocala Live, especially at 50 minutes past the hour. Why 50 minutes past the hour? Because Red Roof Inn now has over 50 Red Roof Inn Plus locations with new upgrades and amenities to make your stay great. And we're giving some lucky listeners a free night stay at any Red Roof Inn around the country. All you have to do is listen for Larry and Robin to tell you to call. So tune in and win from WOCA and Red Roof Inn. Whether you're just starting out in your career or ready to make a change, being a commercial pilot is within your reach. The FAA has predicted that in the next few years, the number of planes in the sky will double, and that means a lot more jobs in aviation. Ocala Aviation has teamed up with an accredited university, enabling you to get a college degree in aviation while training to be a commercial pilot. And with options like financial aid, grants, and scholarships, it's never been a better time to get your new career in aviation started today. For more information, call me at Ocala Aviation, 352-861-7484. Coming this and every second Friday of the month.